Hey, hey, everybody. Um, this week I am coming to you from sunny yet cold Chicago. I am not in the luxury of being in Jamaica like Kristen is right now. But I wanted to bring to you the question of the week because this is a great question and it's actually something that both Chris and I have personal experience with. So first off, if you haven't joined us before for question of the week, we take questions that we get each and every week from our audience and we bring them to you. Um, so if you have a question that you would like to have answered, feel free to post below this Facebook page or head over to mommyincome.com slash contact us and send us a message and let us know what your question is that you'd like to get answered on the question of the week. But let's get into the question. This one comes from Melissa and her question is, is it common for wholesalers to not ship to retail addresses? No, not ship to residential addresses. I came and talked today. So Yes, it is common. It's actually something that I had to deal with relatively early on in my wholesale business. Um, it actually costs wholesalers and retailers and everybody more to ship to a residential address than it does to a commercial address. And because of that, they often don't like to do that. There's also other reasons, like maybe they think that you're actually not buying it for wholesale purposes, that you're using it for personal purposes. But the main one is it costs them more. So it does happen. And sometimes it's the conversation of, I work from home. Can you work with me on this? And sometimes it's, guess what? There are other ways to work around it. I actually ended up getting a box, a post office box at a UPS store. Now you can't get a, a post office box, a PO box from the USPS because they won't accept shipments. But the UPS store, it gives you a commercial address. It gives you a number there, but it also allows you to get anything. I used to get 18 to 20 boxes shipped to my local UPS store from a particular vendor of mine because they refused to ship to my local address that was literally three miles away. Now there are a couple other benefits to having a box like this. So for example, I had this vendor ship there, but I also had another vendor that while I was on vacation decided to ship a pallet earlier than expected through a freight company. Now a freight company will not hold on to your inventory for you. So I was able to call the store, redirect the freight company to the UPS store. They were able to accept the pallet for me and I had one of my employees go take the car, pick it up, and drop it off at my house. I couldn't exactly have a pallet sitting in the middle of my driveway because you never know what the weather's going to do. It wasn't going to give them code to my garage because you never know who you're dealing with, especially if it's a freight company or anybody for that matter. If I don't know you, I'm not giving you the code to my garage, right? So it was a matter of really making it work. Right? We do things in our business to make it work. Now, a box like this at a UPS store or a local pack pack mail is what Kristen used or those types of companies it doesn't cost much it's between 150 and 300 dollars for the year and if this is a vendor that can make you more than 300 dollars by selling their product but you, and you can't access it otherwise think about what that does for your business so do the research do you have something close or locally the other opportunity if you don't have that type of place that's close enough to you that would make that a worthwhile investment for your business is to look to other local storefronts, other commercial places that might be able to have an arrangement set up with them to have your packages shipped to them and then you pick them up. Um, it's a similar thing to what you're doing with UPS if you're paying with that. Is there a commercial residence, whether it's a friend, whether it's a colleague, whether it's another business that you are connected with that you could have your product shipped there? And so just because they say, no, we won't ship to residential addresses does not mean, no, I can't have this vendor anymore. It means that you have this opportunity to problem solve and figure out what can work. If you really want that product, do what it takes to, to take that step and get the product. Um, you know, if it doesn't work out in the long run, I mean, I actually ended up at one point, the vendor couldn't ship to the UPS store and they still shipped to my home address for me. It was not a all the time solution, but at one instance it was fine. This is also a great reason why you use a prep center. Um, it, it eliminates the need for not being able to ship to a resident address. You always have a commercial address. It always ships there. They can always receive a pallet. Um, there's no having to worry about being home to get it received. 
They are there between their business hours of operations. UPS and FedEx know when my prep center is open and they go during those business hours to drop off and receive packages. So there are definitely options that you can look into if you really want a vendor and you want this particular product. So we've talked about getting a box at a local pack mail or UPS store. We've talked about finding somebody else who has a commercial address that you could use to get products delivered to or the opportunity to use a prep center. All three of those are options if you want to get that product and they're not going to ship to your residential address. They're all options to be able to give you a commercial address to be able to still have access to that product. So don't let it be an excuse for why you can't. Let it be a reason why you can. So the reality is you're going to put in the energy and effort that somebody else isn't going to want to put into accessing that product. So Know that because you're gonna put that energy in, other people aren't gonna do that. So you're already a step ahead of plenty of other people who are in a similar situation who aren't putting in the work and energy and effort that you are. So that's what I have for you today. Now I will hopefully be back on again later this week and I'm in Chicago for a mastermind where I'm meeting with eight other women and we are masterminding about our businesses. Um, it's an amazing place to be. But I'm hoping to get on and talk a little bit about Keepa and Camel, Camel, Camel deciding to gate some of their information behind a, a paywall, which I think has some really positives for sellers going forward. I know it's always, I have to pay more, more money to get the information I want, but guess what, guys? That's actually a good thing for those of us in the industry because it means that the people who aren't really serious aren't going to get involved. They're, they're not going to be really willing to spend the money to get that. So I will come on hopefully in eh, maybe a day or two and hop on and talk a little bit more about that whole thing and what's that looks like for changing in how we use Keepa, which honestly, it's not going to change because it's an asset to our business that I can't imagine living without. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I look forward to hopping back on with you guys at another point. So have a great what day of the week it is, Friday. I'm so discombobulated with that this week, but have a great Friday. Remember, if you run into stuck points in your business, look for the solutions. Don't just complain about the problems. We will see you again very soon. Have a great weekend, everybody.